Uh, I think the last time I was in Salt Lake for this event was two, two years ago, and the sincerity of your support is, is refreshing. Um, and I appreciate that more than maybe what you can understand. My wife and I, um, man, we, this is an amazing experience we have being the coach at BYU. And uh, this is the eighth, seventh, eighth, eighth year. Um, <laughs> seems like just one giant year sometimes. Uh, but what an amazing experience. We've, we've been challenged to the point where, you know, we've been to our knees and we've celebrated to the point where we can't, our voices are hoarse and the highs are high and the lows are low, but the purpose remains the same. And uh, I'm passionate about winning football games. Um, I believe, and in my heart, I know it's possible to win a national championship from a winning perspective. And that is, um, I wouldn't stay another day at BYU if I didn't think that was possible. So don't ever, um, because the priorities are what they are, don't ever mistake that's not what we're trying to do. We are. But what if, if you thought about just for a second, what if in today's world of college athletics, and if you just allowed yourself to think about it, when BYU does that, <laughs> with the way it's being done, with 75% of the team, each of the past seven years, and now this eighth year, that are return missionaries, 75%, <laughs> with a grade point average is right at a 3.0, with service hours beyond what you can imagine. <laughs> what if that happens? And what influence would that have on the world? And man, I, I want to win more than you. I know you want to win a lot. <laughs> you tell me that in letters and emails and messages. <laughs> I, I get it. Uh, just in case I'm not sure, I, I understand that. <laughs> if I were to email all of you, you don't want it as much as I do. I promise you that. But this is a lot bigger purpose than, uh, than just that. And man, I hope you can have a great time at the games. I hope it's family tradition. I hope that you love to be with your kids and cheer and buy the cougar tails and you know wear the BYU jerseys. I hope it's a great afternoon, but I also hope you take it home with you and it's a great thing to support because of what we represent. And not this... in the afternoon anymore. What do you say? It's not in the afternoons anymore. Yeah, it's an amazing thing uh, while, uh, while we talk about that. We have an exclusive, by the way, television partner in ESPN. So to address that, last year of 123 teams, how many were seen more on national television than BYU? In the world. And for the church, that's a good thing. By the way, if you add BYU TV to it, that then passes another three, another four. And so, in terms of exposure, whether it's in the afternoon or the evening, the world is watching. And that's something that beats the heck out of the mountain. I would just as soon get up and play, regardless of that. But we are, with what we represent, anxious for the most people to see us in the world. And that's why we have an exclusive, only us and them deal. And so while not everyone will be happy, they're not with me all the time. I know it. I hear it. <laughs> However, President Hinckley, um, man, that guy, when I was trying to decide what I believed, he was kind of the one in charge. And so I listened to him, and uh, he was getting ready to be interviewed in a pretty fierce setting by Mike Wallace of 60 Minutes. <coughs> Never had that happened before. Seasoned reporter, and he knew, in his words, it wasn't all gonna be favorable. And so he had a quote, which is my favorite, and many will wonder why there's a book. And I'm gonna explain that in just a second. I didn't write it. I just agreed to be the subject matter because of the story. He made a comment that said, well, I could either lean into the stiff wind opportunity of opportunity or sit back and do nothing. And to me, um, leaning was a great start, but the way the wind is now, we better be running. And so running into the wind of opportunity is what myself, what Riley, what Curtis, what Romney, that's what we're trying to do. We're linking arms and running into the wind to try to do something very, very special. And so I can't get everywhere to tell these stories. Um, but they're captured basically as a gift to help others understand what we're really trying to do. And again, I didn't write what's in the book, but it's factual and it's accurate. 
and it is what we're trying to do, and very compelling and very intimate. And two, let's see, a week ago, two weeks ago, and I'll share this one story, and it's it's kind of risky to tell. We had um, Elder Bednar come. He accepted an invitation to come speak to our team and do a fireside. And all he asked was, well, he asked our, asked our players if they would frame questions. He didn't speak. He just allowed them to ask questions for about an hour and a half. And they could ask anything they wanted if it was well thought out, they had wrestled with it, was very sincere, and they were willing to work on whatever he then counseled them. And then they could ask whatever question they want. And I thought with that, no one would ask a single question. <laughs> Within a minute, maybe, of that, a hand shot up right in the front by someone I wouldn't have expected, and he asked a very sincere and genuine question, pretty revealing. And then the questions kept going nonstop for about an hour and a half until finally Elder Bednar stopped. One of the questions, to make it really clear to you, because you weren't there, um, and I wasn't, the players were there, and I'm going to share just this one small point, because it was an intimate night just for he and our players, but I'll share this one point with you so you understand exactly what we're doing and why, and who I listen to and why. One of our players stood up and asked, what do you expect of us at BYU football as players? And he kind of stepped forward, Elder Bednar did, and the players were standing when they were asking questions, and he kind of stepped forward. And he said, I expect you to be unique, different, and peculiar in everything that you do on the field, in the classroom, in your personal lives, and again, in what we represent. You are to be not like any other program or person that plays football in the world. And they ought to know. That's what he said, exactly in that tone. And there wasn't any if, this, or that. He also meant how we played. He made it clear that we were supposed to be distinct and different and peculiar in every way on and off the field. That's who I listen to, by the way. I'm not perfect at doing this job. I never will be. However, that is why I'm doing the job. And I'm surrounded by young men that are, they're absolutely remarkable. They're not perfect, but they're worthy of your support. I'm lucky to coach them. We have a fantastic team, 29 seniors and a schedule that I don't look at one game and say, man, I'm not sure about that one. I believe that we have a chance, a legitimate chance, no matter where we're playing this year with this team. I'm not promising we win them all, but I am promising. I look at it, and I look at our team, and I feel that we have a great chance in every football game this year. Your support means a lot. Um, and it's different, different places that I go. Maybe it's because you're surrounded by another influence up here, and maybe those roots run deeper, but I think you appreciate it more than some other places that I go, and that comes across. So thank you for that. My wife and I, um, man, we're linking arms and we're charging into the wind this year, and we'll just keep going, and hopefully you're with us. So thank you very much.